Hello, this is Dr. James Camp from Lee College in Baytown, Texas, and this is the first in my series of videos on cell physiology basics. Today we're talking about energy metabolism. The first thing we're going to talk about is cell energy metabolism. The basic problem in cell energy metabolism is how to turn the fuel molecules that a cell has to use into as many ATP as possible. You can think of this as being similar to the problem of uh, generating power in our world, that we have fuel sources like natural gas or coal or even uh, solar or wind power, and we have to convert that power into electricity so that we can power our homes and our devices. Similarly, cells have to take their glucose, their fatty acids, uh, any amino acids that they want to use for fuel instead of for proteins, and they need to convert those into as many ATP as possible so that they can fuel, uh, power their cellular machinery. If you're starting with glucose, there is a common first step, no matter how you're going to proceed from here, and that is uh, glycolysis. Glycolysis is the process of breaking glucose. Okay, you can look at that word. Glyco means uh, pro, uh, means glucose or sugar. Lysis is a Greek word meaning to break down. So in the cytoplasm, so anywhere in the cell in the cytoplasm, uh, one glucose molecule can be broken down into two pyruvate molecules. Glucose has six carbons and contains a lot of energy. Pyruvate has three carbons and contains a little less energy. And in the process of, of breaking glucose down into two pyruvates, you also generate two ATP and two of a molecule called NADH that we'll see the importance of later. NADH is what we call uh, an electron carrier. And it can be used... Uh, in something called electron transport chain uh, later in uh, the process. Now, if no oxygen is available to the cell at this point, then we can't uh, oxidize the glucose any further. We can't literally burn the fuel. Um, and so uh, we have to do something with this pyruvate and this NADH so that we can... Uh, get back to uh, the process of burning more, uh, breaking down more glucose. Uh, so each pyruvate and NADH is broken down into a lactate, or combined in a way into a lactate. Uh, that lactate interconverts with a, a molecule called lactic acid, and so this is called lactic acid fermentation. Whenever you use your muscles anaerobically, that is without enough oxygen uh, to burn the fuel completely, you generate lactic acid. And when you use muscles that are not properly conditioned for lactic acid fermentation, uh, you get a feeling that they uh, refer to as lactic acid burn. It's a feeling of, of a kind of burning pain in your muscles because of the buildup of lactic acid. If oxygen is available, however, if, if we're in a high oxygen environment, either because our cardiovascular system is keeping up well with our exercise or because we're not exercising that much right now, we can continue to step two. In step two, uh, step two is referred to as the citric acid cycle. Okay, uh, I should mention that uh, the uh, citric acid cycle and uh, the other third step both happen in the mitochondria. So you remember these little uh, funny organelles with the inner and outer membrane. Uh, there's an inner part of the membrane and that's where the citric acid uh, cycle happens. You, you've got your your citric acid cycle happens here. Uh, and what happens is that each 
uh, each pyruvate that we made in glycolysis comes in here to the citric acid cycle. Um, this is also where breakdown of fatty acids and breakdown of amino acids come together uh, to, to join the, uh, the energy metabolism parade. Uh, if you want to break down fatty acids, there's a different first step. It's not glycolysis. It's called beta oxidation. If you want to break down amino acids, you have to do what's called deaminating them. You have to take the amino part out of them. Um, and then you, you get this common molecule called acetyl-CoA. And acetyl-CoA starts its way through the citric acid cycle. For each turn through the citric acid cycle, one acetyl-CoA and uh, one leftover CO2 from the pyruvate get turned into three CO2. So we have uh, three CO2 coming out of the mitochondria and eventually having to, to get kicked out of the cell. But we also produce some more of those electron carriers, the NADH, um, and there's another electron carrier called uh, QH2. The Q stands for ubiquitin or quinone. And we, we get one more ATP for each pyruvate. So that's a total of, of two ATP from one glucose that we produce here. We've got two ATP that we've made in the glycolysis. So we're, we're now up to, to four ATP. We've doubled our ATP output. That's a pretty good deal. But what do we do with all of these NADHs and the QH2s and such? There's a third step, which has two different names. Um, they're not two different names for the same thing. They're just two processes that happen together. And this third step is referred to as uh, the electron transport chain and the, uh, the step that goes with it to make all the energy is referred to as oxidative phosphorylation. Okay. Um, oxidative phosphorylation. Um, oxidative because we're using oxygen phosphorylation because we are phosphorylating we're adding a phosphate to ADP to make ATP now this electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation they happen on that inner membrane of the uh, so you have your ETC uh, happens in several different places on the, the membrane of the the inner membrane of the mitochondria and that's why it has its two membranes is so that it has a place for that electron transport chain to go and what happens is your electron carriers like NADH um, give their you know electrons to oxygen um, plus some hydrogens that are floating around uh, and you produce you regenerate your empty electron carriers and you also get water as a byproduct. So here uh, we're producing um, water uh, kind of as a waste product. You're, you're generating water, which just goes out into the cell and does what water does in a cell. Um, but uh, as you do this ETC, it powers another uh, process on the cell membrane. It powers something called the oxidative phosphorylation machine. And the oxidative phosphorylation machine is busy turning ATP into AD, ADP into ATP. I'm sorry. It's turning adenosine diphosphate, the low energy form, into adenosine triphosphate, the high energy form. And this produces 32 to 34 ATP per glucose. So that is a huge improvement. We had four, we had two in glycolysis, two in the citric acid cycle. We get 32 to 34 here. Okay.
So let's look at the net results. Again, we want to start with fuel molecules as, uh, and end with as many ATP as possible. So in cells with not enough oxygen or not enough mitochondria to uh, fully oxidize their fuel, we take glucose and we turn it into two lactic acid, a, a kind of mildly harmful byproduct, and two ATP. Is that good? Well, it's better than nothing, um, and it's fast. That's the other advantage of this, is that in muscles that have to contract quickly before the cardiovascular system can get them enough oxygen, uh, glycolysis happens very quickly, and they can get, uh, they burn a lot of fuel to do it, but they can get a lot of glucose. It's like, uh, it's analogous to a sports car that uh, has, uh, it's analogous to a fancy sports car uh, that has, you know, low miles per gallon, but uh, high speed. Okay. Uh, most of the time we don't choose to do that because our, our body wants more efficiency. It wants to get more ATP out of its glucose. In cells with plenty of oxygen and mitochondria, uh, we do glucose... Uh, plus six, you know, for each glucose, we use 6O2 in the mitochondria, uh, and we produce six CO2 from our citric acid cycle, and six H2O from our electron transport chain. And now we get uh, 36 to 38 ATP out of, uh, out of our uh, energy. Now here, you know, this is your Toyota Prius, uh, with the uh, with the high MPG and kind of a medium speed. Okay, uh, it's not quite as fast as the sports car, but once the uh, cardiovascular system is getting enough oxygen there, then it can run for a really long time at high, uh, very high efficiency. Uh, for comparison, um, the sort of, you know, the highest efficiency engines that we produce in, in really high efficiency sports cars produce, get something like 30% of the energy out of our gasoline. Um, doing uh, the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation gets us something like 60 to 70% of the energy out of our, our glucose fuel. So you can... Tell your friends that when you're running a marathon, you're actually being twice as efficient as uh, the most efficient sports car at uh, running that marathon. What kinds of cells would use each of these methods? Um, again, for, uh, for cells with not enough oxygen, that's uh, for uh, anaerobic Muscles, that's going to be pure glycolysis and lactic acid. Okay, uh, the lactic acid method. For uh, virtually uh, everyone else, uh, you're aerobic muscles, your nervous system that's constantly using energy, your heart muscle, um, they're going to want to use the, uh, the oxidative method. All right, so that sums up what we need to know about cell energy metabolism. Moving on, we're going to move